All right, hey, welcome to Valuable Physical Education. Uh, we're excited today to be able to have an adapted uh, physical education teacher on with us. Um, so Kevin, so go ahead and give a little introduction. Yeah, it's my pleasure to introduce Coach uh, Haley, who is an adapted physical education teacher. She uh, went to a community college at Irvine Valley College, played volleyball there for Coach Pestalacy. Then she went and continued her volleyball career and her academic career at Whittier College and played for Coach Chris over there. Uh, while she did that, she got her uh, physical education teaching credential along with her adapted physical education teaching credential. And currently, she is teaching adaptive physical education. Great to have you on the show, Coach. Is there anything else you'd like to add for our fans to get to know you? Uh, no, just I'm excited to be here. It's my third year teaching, so hopefully I can provide a little bit of insight coming from someone who is um, sort of still new to the field, but still still learning, but still um, but rooted in in knowing what to do with the with the profession. Yeah, I think um, I mean my experience. Anytime I've been around an adapted PE teacher, um, they always seem to be. I don't know, not, not that they're ahead of, of physical education teachers, but they seem to have a, a different understanding of um, their their field. So I, I think, you know, even though you're in your third year, you definitely have a lot of knowledge that, you know, a regular physical education teacher doesn't have because um, it's not our area of expertise. So um, I think that that's, that's awesome. Um, you know, three years is a, you know, it's a long time being with adapted PE. Um, you know, I've sat through IEPs and, and things, and it's uh, it's a lot of extra work when you're when you're working with those. So that's awesome. Um, I think Kevin had a question about about that actually. Yeah. So you know, one thing that I wanted to get going right away with is in adapted physical education. There's a lot of what we call IEPs. Can you explain to those viewers that are maybe uh, in college, that are seniors, that are considering if they're going to go into general physical education or adapted PE? Um, can you explain to them what an IEP is and what they need to expect? Because I know a lot of adapted PE teachers are in IEPs a lot. Yeah. So basically an IEP is an individualized education program. So if you do have a child that falls in one of the 13 categories um, with special education, um, so it can range from autism, orthopedic impairment, speech language um, impairment, things of that sort. Um, they have an, what's called an IEP and basically addresses their areas of needs, but it also addresses their areas of strengths um, and goals are written based on those areas of needs. Uh, for adapted PE, we write, uh, we write it for areas of gross motor and how they pertain to physical education and the standards. Um, and once a year annually, the uh, team gets together. The team consists of parents, administrators, um, and service providers and also the classroom teacher. And so they meet, go over these goals once a year and then they'll create new goals for the following year. And then they'll again meet um, to see the progress on the students' um, goals and see if they've met them or not. Um, hopefully they've met them and they've grown closer to those state standards, um, whether it be in math and um, English, PE for us, things of that sort. Um, and then what to expect during, um, during an IEP is obviously <laughs> for, for your part of the IEP, you need to complete your portion. So that includes updating progress on the current goal, whether they've met it or not is what I mean. Um, providing present levels of the students. So how are they doing in PE? What are, what have you been seeing? What are they able to do, um, that you've seen in, in, in your adapted PE class and or, you know, if they're out in PE with, um, with the PE teacher. Um, also updating services as well. So how often are you gonna see the student in order to meet their goals? So we always say that services are driven by uh, goals, which are, sorry, goals are driven by uh, services, which is driven by placement. So um, I said that completely wrong. <laughs> <laughs> a little nervous right now. It's all, good. all right. Placement is driven by goals, driven by services. So when you follow that order, everything gets, it kind of falls into place. So, Hey, if this kid has this many goals, can they meet it with 
you know, your specific services that you're, you're providing, if you're going to see them twice, two, twice a week for 30 minutes, or do you think they're going to be able to meet those three goals or do they need more time, less time? So it all depends on, on every student, every student's individual. That's why it's called an individual um, education program because they are so unique and everyone is so different. I think that's that's great information for those people who are looking at becoming PE teachers. I know that was not something that was ever addressed. I don't think in any of the classes I I had. Um, and again, I think it's it's great when um, administrators put general physical education teachers into some of these IEPs just so they get to know the students, even if they don't have goals that are surrounded with um, with physical education. It lets you know, you know that that this student might have something that, although you're not directly working on it um i don't know why our video disappeared all right um even though you're not directly you know working on those math goals or language arts goals it still may impact the way that you need to talk to that that student so that that's great is do you do you help work with uh 504 plans at all too or is that something that is worked on um with different set of team or that's definitely a more unique situation. So um, there have been times where I have been on a 504 plan, which is slightly different than an IEP. An IEP, you're actually modifying the curriculum. So you're changing what the student is learning versus a 504, which is more of an accommodation. You're changing how the student's learning the curriculum. So you're not changing what they're learning. You're just changing how. So there have been times where I have been on a 504 and I've done accommodations for a specific student um, for for PE. Coach Haley, what's uh, impressive that I notice is you do have your general physical education credential and you also have your adapted uh, physical education credential. Can you talk to the viewers a little bit about um, what type of extra classes you had to take? Because when you go and apply for a job, which it's just facts, you know, we all have our strengths. Like, so when I apply for a job, yeah, I have a master's in PE, I have a teaching credential and I have an admin credential. Great. You know, and Miles has more experience than me. He has the master's and that's what he's got going for him. What you got going for you is very unique. Uh, you can bring something to the district. Why is it an advantage to one do that, what you did and what extra classes did you have to take and how much more time did that take you to accomplish the goal that you got to? Yeah. So an advantage of it was, I mean, a APE itself is not really um, that it's, it's kind of big, but it's not really that big. So it's, it's just like any other PE position where you really need to jump on it if there's an opening. So that's just kind of what I did. And I mean, just working with special ed students, I love doing it. So that was just another added bonus for me. Um, so they always say it's not for everybody, but I mean, everybody has their, has their niche. So um, I just absolutely love working with, with students with special needs. So um, that just kind of all worked out in itself. So um, there, the, there's not really an advantage, I would say, to having the adapted PE credential for necessarily my job position. You do need it for my position in order to do all the assessments, but it has helped with even just having the PE classes because um, now I'm able to go in and, oh, understand it from both sides. So even just talking to my coworkers that are PE teachers, uh, whether it be at the high school level, level, the elementary level, or even the middle school level, being able and saying, hey, I understand your perspective from this and I understand why you're doing this. This is what also we can do to help, you know, our students that are in your classes and help them be safe and successful in PE. Um, so yeah, so that was that part. Um, the other part with your question is I majored in kinesiology, so I had nothing to do really with, with the teaching aspect. So I did have to do about a half year, um, at Cal Poly Pomona with, um, with the teaching credential course. So I did have to take prereqs, um, to get into the credential program. I had all the prerequisites though, um, to, to do PE and adapted PE through the kinesiology portion of my, of my major. Um, so overall though, it was about two and a half years after, um, my bachelor's degree. Yeah, I know there's, there's some programs out there that, that, you know, 
take physical education teachers and give them those extra classes and, and kind of accelerate it along. But that, that is great. And I do think, you know, I think there are probably more openings out there for adapted PE than there are for physical education. And, and again, I, then I think the field of, of teachers is a little bit smaller that are applying for those. So it just kind of ups your, your, your opportunities. Um, so I think it, it's a good option for people to, to look at, but like you yeah. said, you definitely have to want to work with, um, you know, kids that have, um, a wide range of, of needs. Um, what are, what, what do the skill ranges look like that, that you work with and what are some of the different um, types of, you know, disabilities that you're working with um, throughout any given day? Uh, skill ranges really just vary um, from site to site. So I could have students that are, you know, higher in skills and, and students that are lower in skills. I work with students in wheelchairs. I have medically fragile students. So we're really all over the place and it really varies from site to site. It varies from student to student, class to class. Um, typically, um, we see a lot of autistic students, um, Down syndrome, students with orthopedic impairments, um, students in wheelchairs, and like I said, students that are medically fragile that are, you know, they're really only able to grasp and release and you have to work around what they can do instead of saying, well, you can't do this, you can't do that, you know, what can you do? And then that's, that's actually the nice part about my job is I, I get a focus on, okay, you can do this and, you know, you may not be able to throw, but guess what? I'm going to get you a little pitching machine that I know you can grasp and release a ball into the, you know, into the thing. And you're going to be able to, you're going to be able to throw, throw, but you're still going to, you know, you can still do it. So. Hey, all right. A big thank you to Miss Haley um, for coming on and, and talking with us and letting us know about adapted physical education. And I think the, the most important thing for all physical educators out there is to understand uh, what an IEP is, what a 504 plan is, and how you can be involved in it, whether it has to do with uh, goals around physical education or not. Um, tomorrow, she dives into kind of more what her class setup looks like. And, you know, we talk a little bit about the importance of, of her kind of expanding on just having a physical education credential in order to be able to find a good, um, solid physical education job. And so getting that adapted credential, um, you know, is really an important thing. I think tomorrow too, she, she touches on adapted physical educators working with um, the classroom physical educators. And I think that's another important piece to, to hear. So Again, a big thank you for today's episode, and we look forward to continuing the interview tomorrow. So uh, make sure you come back tomorrow and, and take a listen. Hey, we want to thank our sponsor, One Stone Apparel. They do great physical education clothes, made us this great polo for valuable coaching, and they do awesome vocabulary tees, perfect for physical education. they got great words on the back. You can customize them. Great artwork, easy to work with. Dave at One Stone Apparel. Check them out, onestoneapparel.com.